Hey everybody, this is Kevin for another episode of Lazy Literature. I hope you, your families, anybody and everybody in between who you care about, I hope you had a good 4th of July weekend. And if you're still celebrating, keep it down and let the rest of us get some sleep when the sun goes down. Last week, I reviewed and recommended that everybody take a look, everybody take a read over High Fidelity by Nick Hornby, and then also take a look at some of the writing Hunter S. Thompson has done about the Hell's Angels Motorcycle Club. For this week, I'm going to be switching gears slightly. Last week, it was a combination of fiction with nonfiction to take a look at young men and maybe two different routes that they could take in their lives. Outlaw motorcycle clubs or smoking, complaining, list making record shop owners for the Hells Angels and High Fidelity respectively. This week I read three fiction books technically by Paul Oster. It was the New York trilogy and in the New York trilogy it starts off with 1985's uh, City of Glass and then 1986's Ghosts and finally The Locked Room. Overall all together I didn't really like this trilogy and I don't necessarily know if I would recommend it for anybody to read and while I will admit that I did find the first book City of Glass interesting and engaging and different than any other detective book or mystery novel that I've read for Ghosts and the locked room the final two were just annoying and for lack of a better phrase i thought the author paul oster was trying to be a little clever with his characters and as a result i just felt confused and reading these books made me feel kind of dumb because i think from City of Glass to Ghosts, all the way through the final book of the New York trilogy, The Locked Room, you have to pay attention to small details from the characters because these small details become major plot points in the subsequent novels. The New York trilogy, it starts off really good with City of Glass. It's fun and it's deliberately vague for certain parts of the setting so it seems like a story that could take place at any time in human history but more than anything else the reason i like city of glass is paul oster does something really clever where he creates his main character of the novel and he takes him through the plot the mystery that he's trying to solve but then something i haven't encountered before and i ended up thinking was incredibly clever is that paul oster introduces himself as a character in the city of glass the main character of the novel is impersonating the character of paul oster and for my reading experiences i just haven't ever encountered a plot device that was so wildly entertaining and i just thought it was so clever we have the author who creates a character that is impersonating the character of the author it's like three layers of complexity and i thought that was enough for the first book city of glass it was clever it had a good plot that was entertaining from start to finish and the characters were complex as I just described and they were believable and it made me feel like they were actual people who had their own thoughts, feelings, but most importantly 
the motivations to do what they're doing in the text. But the final two books of the New York trilogy, Ghosts and The Locked Room, I don't think they were that great. Ghosts was weird. It was one long novella in the edition that I had. There were no chapters, there were no real breaks. Once you started Ghosts, you had to read all the way through because there was no good place to stop while reading it and just put it down and take a break and reflect on what I just read. Go have a cup of coffee or something. I didn't like Ghosts just because of that. It forced you to read all the way through from start to finish and I didn't like that because while I do read a lot and I do read every day I like to find a stopping point when I read. I like to find a place where I can put a pause or hold a thought, go think about it as I work, hang out with my girlfriend, go for a run, and then I can get back into my reading the next day when I wake up, do my morning routine, and then finally sit down and do my morning reading. Ghosts was trying to be clever and it was very overwhelming and I didn't like it as a result I felt like I had to force myself to read ghosts to try and get to the final book of the New York trilogy the locked room and to be honest I don't really feel like it was worth it to make it all the way to the end the reason I say that is that by the end of the New York trilogy None of the characters make sense. They don't seem like real people. They seem like soap opera actors. And the plot, while it is appropriate for a mystery novel, it's not engaging and it's not gripping. And for Ghosts and the Locked Room, Paul Auster, the author himself, not the author as a character, he... To be fair, gives you appropriate mystery characters, a plot that keeps it moving, but he draws upon all of these small details from his previous books, and they seem overblown. And it's like he's making a small, finite detail open to interpretation, and it just seems redundant and more than anything else the word I would use is that I think the final two books of the New York trilogy ghosts and the locked room I think they're lazy because they're boring he took a book like city of glass to start off the trilogy in a way that's exciting and it grips your attention and it brings you back wanting more. And he ends the trilogy by first giving you ghosts, which you have to force yourself to read from start to finish without a break. And then you get the locked room and nothing exciting happens. I don't feel like there's any analysis of maybe any important topics. And it's just boring from start to finish. So for this week of lazy literature, I'm gonna recommend that everybody go out and start the New York Trilogy and read The City of Glass by Paul Auster. If you wanna read Ghosts and The Locked Room, more power to you. I would not recommend doing that. I would take your time and go read something else. Maybe something that I've recommended, or maybe you're reading something and you can drop me a comment and let me know what you're reading right now. What's good, what's not good, or to reuse a phrase, uh, anything in between those two. Next week, I have no idea what I'm going to re be reviewing or recommending. Right now, I think it's going to be Spider-Man and the story arcs put out by Brian Michael Bendis. And that sounds like a good idea to me right now. Have a good week, everybody.